After voting down the standard contract renewals with Geo Group and Core Civic, the Denver City Council has agreed to short-term contracts with the for-profit corporations. The move will give the city, the, the city government one year to develop new plans for halfway house operations. Michael, we were talking about this last week because uh, just the whole idea of halfway houses and their role within the criminal justice system, people, unless they have somebody connected to it, don't usually know a whole lot about it or they know they may not want it next to their house, their apartment. But it sounds like we're going to be able to learn a lot more about halfway houses and their value in Denver. Uh, did the Denver City Council do the right thing about at least giving themselves some more time to handle this issue? Yeah, I think they had to. Um, you know, they, they went out ahead of this and said, uh, we're going to shut this down. And there was a problem. Are these people all going to go back to prison? What is going to happen with these people? Um, and then they had to fix it somehow when it was actually getting to that point. Uh, I think they're, they're, Denver City Council is playing politics without a real solution. And then when the real impacts come, let's try to fix it really quick. Um, I think you have to look at it. It's like the immigration detention centers is one issue. The halfway houses is a completely different issue. Um, and, and with these quick decisions, and you saw this, this week with the you know this impacts Colorado in general you have this impacts other communities if they shut down these halfway houses they go to other other people's communities too and so I think you know the, the city council on a lot of these issues this the carbon tax other things they have to think things through before making these these decisions and then having to backtrack some of them or change things and so I'm looking at Denver City Council is a very interesting place right now uh, and I think for a lot of reasons and so we'll see how this one plays out. Marie, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, five new faces in the Denver City Council took over, and this was one of the, the biggest effects those new faces had because this is the, the, the re sign up on this contract is supposed to be, the renewal of this contract is supposed to be just a fait accompli. It's going to be a slam dunk. Everything changed that one evening. Are we looking at more, uh, at the very least, uh, exciting news coming out of the Denver City Council because of the new faces involved? Absolutely. I think we're going to see some different things. And personally, I support the effort to do a deep dive into these for-profit contracts and these private vendors that are getting millions of dollars and known to be associated with some pretty bad human rights abuses and detention centers. But what I don't support is not taking a thoughtful, long-term, transparent approach, especially when we're dealing with one of the most vulnerable populations in Colorado. This is where good government doesn't just mean doing the bold, impulsive move. It means stepping back, laying out a thoughtful plan to make sure there's no disruption of care for these folks. Petty, there's the, the strong mayor form of government. That's not a necessarily compliment for Mayor Hancock. It's just the way it's structured with a city council and the mayor and who gets to have the final say on things like budget, things like that. Uh, do you see uh, Mayor Hancock stepping in a little bit more often to remind the council of that uh, official government format setup? Would have been nice if he'd done that last year in August when they approved the DIA contract with mm -hmm. Ferruvial. So uh, with the Great Hall thing. So that's another classic of moving way too fast. In this case, absolutely, they moved too quickly. And when you look at the Department of Corrections and the people who've been in charge of it in recent years, including Dean Williams, we have an interview with him today. These are really thoughtful people who are trying to think about how to treat people correctly in prison, but then also to work on recidivism. And how can you help people, once they've served their time, get the tools they need to get out? And for that, usually you need a really good halfway house experience, which these people are not getting, and they certainly were not going to get if all of a sudden everything was shut down and they had to go back to prison. So it's one the city really owes a lengthy and smart response. Erica, do you think we're going to get that, that lengthy and smart response? I mean, it, it, the Denver City Council still has now that they've signed these short-term contracts, some time to think this out. Is there room for, for some public debate about halfway houses in, in Denver? I certainly would hope there would be room for some public debate, but I, I, what I took away from this is just how entwined and embedded these systems are um, with the for-profit corrections or all sorts of other things that have been um, privatized or contracted out and just in our personal lives if we want to if we don't like how a company is acting and we want to pull our money and then it turns out they own 15 other things that maybe we're not willing to pull our money from I, I think we're seeing that play out in a governmental sense that affects a lot more people.